They're an offering that you give to the poor people, poorest of the poor. So he's there asking for alms, and Peter and John say, we don't have gold, we don't have silver, but what we have to give you. What do they say? Third Sunday, folks. Say this after I say it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Stand up and walk. Let's say that all together like we mean it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. What does he do? He stands up and walks. Now this is a man who has never walked in his life, and he stands up and walks. So two miracles, really, that he's healed and that he knows how to walk. Could you imagine not ever walking and standing up and walking? Not only does he walk, but in Greek, the translation literally means he jumps with joy runs into the temple where he had not been able to go before, okay? Last week, what happened? Some people took offense. They were annoyed. Who was annoyed? The Sadducees were annoyed because they didn't like him talking about what? Peter gets in their face and they say, by what name did you do this? He said, don't think we did this by our own power or piety, but we healed him in the name of Jesus. Remember when we sang just, be unto your name, and Jesus, name above all names. We want this name thing to stand out for you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And he stands up and he walks. Right? But he gets in trouble for doing that because they don't like hearing about this resurrection business. Remember, the Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. That's why they're sad. You see? That old, I mean, that's a groaner, all right. But that is how you remember that one. They don't want to talk about the resurrection. They said, this is the one who was raised from the dead, the one that you killed, the one that you traded for a murderer. Who was the murderer they traded him for? Barabbas. Because Pilate was going to free Jesus because he could find no offense in him. And Nope, Jesus was going to be sent to the cross for them. Now, today is part three, which is if you speak your mind, if you speak in power, what's going to happen to you maybe? You're going to get yourself in big trouble. Now, where have you heard these names before? Annas and Caiaphas, John, Alexander. This is happening so soon after the time of Jesus being put to death by the same high council, the Sanhedrin. Now Peter is going to be put in front of the same people that Jesus was put in front of. Where was Peter when Jesus went to the Sanhedrin before? Where was he? Sitting by a fire saying, I don't know the guy. I don't know him being a big wimp, right? And now he is standing in front of them and they say, by what name are you doing this? By the name of Jesus Christ, we're doing this. Now I think the whole key to this lesson is found in this one line. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were what? Uneducated and ordinary men. They were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. Uneducated and ordinary men. Raise your hand if you're an uneducated, ordinary human being. Raise your hand if you're, um, well, I mean, some of you have education. We didn't just not go to school, did we? But how many of you feel pretty ordinary? How many of you sometimes feel like you're not ready to be an adult? I'm 65 years old, and there are days I want my mom. I want my mom every day now, but, you know, but still. How many of you ever feel like, I'm not ready for this adult business? This is mean. This is messy. This is a lot of stuff, a lot of responsibility that I don't want to have. They're uneducated, ordinary men, and they're speaking boldly on behalf of Jesus to the same people who put him in the cross, on the cross. These are the same people who said, crucify him. These are the same people who had his life ended. And now here is this fisherman, this fisherman of all people, and his companion, who's also a fisherman. They, they looked down on these people. They were like nothing in this society. And here they are speaking boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. And they say, what are we going to do with them? It's obvious that something happened, because everyone knew this man. How long it said today, we found out he was over 40 years old. 40, over 40 years old. Anybody here over 40 years old? Anybody here under 40 years old today? I don't think there is. But can you imagine getting up after 40 years and walking and everyone who saw it and they're amazed. We see amazed in the name of Jesus. Amazed, amazed, amazed. That's why we sang, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene a couple weeks ago because this is Jesus of Nazareth, the one you put to death. So what do they say? We'll just tell them not to talk about him anymore. That worked, didn't it? 
What do they say when they say, just don't talk about him anymore? I love it. Whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than God, you must judge, for we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. And how many people did we say last week came to believe because of their 5,000? 5,000 people standing there. They can't say, well, they are making this up. This is just, this is one of those conspiracy theory kind of things. This is just nuts. This is craziness. This couldn't happen. They all knew it had happened. I like what Peter says earlier on when he says, all this because we healed somebody. No one ever says, what a great thing happened to this man. No one ever says, praise be to God in the Sanhedrin, in the high council of Jews because they cannot get past the fact that they're doing this in the name of Jesus, and they thought he was gone. Oh, but no, he is still there. Name of all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us. God is still with us, even though he's been raised from the dead. They don't think he's been raised from the dead. They just think he's gone away, but nope, he is still here, and he's going to stay. So what happened to Peter? What happened to him? That's not a rhetorical question. What happened to Peter? The Holy Spirit was poured into him, and he was able to do more than he thought possible. So why aren't we out there healing people and bringing people to Christ? Again, not a rhetorical question. It's when you have to ask yourself this week and in the weeks to come, because we just think we don't have it in us, don't we? What are the things that keep us from doing these things that Peter and John did and more. Remember Jesus, I said, we're going to hear from the gospel every week. We're going to hear the little gospel. The first week it was Jesus saying to them, you're going to do better things than I can do. Look, if you don't believe in my words, believe the works. You've seen what I can do, and you're going to do greater works than these. And last week we had Jesus speaking, not in the gospels, but in Acts. And I said Last week, that Leander Keck, who did the Disciple Bible Study, referred to Acts as the gospel of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says what? You will be my witnesses. And what did Peter say last week? We are witnesses to these things. We have witnessed this. We've witnessed Jesus raising from the dead. And now today, look at our call to worship. Did anybody notice? Where did that come from? Jesus was approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives where the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in highest heaven. What is that from? You recognize those words? They're not shouting Hosanna. If they were shouting Hosanna, you'd recognize it, right? It's a triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which happened just a few weeks before this time. And what does Jesus say when they said the Pharisees this time? The Pharisees said, teacher, tell your disciples to shut up. And he answers them, what? I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. One of the reasons we're going to teach the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego again. I love it. It's my favorite Old Testament story. I'm going to teach it to the kids this week again at Bible school next two weeks from now. It just feels like this week because I've been working on it so long. This is, this is Baltimore County Christian Work Camp. We, next week is Vacation Bible School, the week after that, but that's coming up very quickly. But why do we teach Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego all the time? It's not a kid's story. Everybody thinks it is because their names sound funny and they have all those instruments playing and it reads like a Dr. Seuss story if you really look at the cadence of the story. But what do they say when Nebuchadnezzar says, worship this big golden statue I set up or else? They say, okay, we'll... God's going to save us? No, they said God could save us if God wants to save us, but even if God doesn't, we're not going to worship your statue. So Peter's saying right here, we don't care what you do to us anymore. We cannot be quiet about this. We've got to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. I said last week about all the calls I got about Sheets having gasoline for a cheap price on the 4th of July. I got more calls about that than I've ever gotten about Jesus being the Savior of the world. We've got to share that story like we mean it. We've got to go out into the world think, yes, if the Holy Spirit comes upon me and tells me to heal somebody, I can heal somebody. If the Holy Spirit comes upon me and tells me to change something, I can change it. If the Holy Spirit comes upon me and tells me that I need to get rid of some stuff in my life, I'm going to get rid of that stuff, whether it be drugs or alcohol or pornography or whatever people are addicted to in the world today. God will give you the power to turn away from it once and for all because we're talking power here, unleashed raw power from God through the Holy Spirit. 
Peter knows the scripture too. He says, the stone of the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. What does the cornerstone do in a house? It's not the same as just having the little date on it. What's a cornerstone do? Holds up the place, right? Sets it right. Plum and everything else. It's going to get you're going to build your house right. And they've rejected it, but that is what we're going to build our faith on, Jesus says. He is the cornerstone, and we're going to build our home on him, and it's going to stand, it's going to last. So by what name are we doing these things? Are in our own name? No. If we did everything by name of Epworth United Methodist Church, everything we did would just sort of fade out. But what we're doing is we're doing it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that was crucified, the one that was raised, the one that has come to us and will come to us again in the fullness of time. That is by whose name and whose power we live. That's by whose name and by whose power I overcome the things I have to overcome. And I've got a lot of stuff on my plate right now. I can't walk right. I can't talk right. My shoulder hurts. My mother, I miss her terribly. I still miss my husband, too. It's been almost eight years, seven years for him now. But it's just you got to keep going, right? And I go by the power of Jesus Christ in his name. I go by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what gets us all up and out every day. Amen? You say it like you're not sure. Amen? Amen. So when are we going to when are we going to be out in the world telling people about Jesus Christ? When are we out there telling people? When is it going to be our turn not to shut up about it? We talked about Jeremiah just a few weeks ago. What did he say? Every time I try to keep my mouth shut, I've got a fire in my bones. I cannot keep quiet. I've got to shout out Jesus Christ. For him it was God, not Jesus, but Jesus was the one who was coming. And last week we read how Moses had said, one is going to come after me who's greater than me. Sure, sort of John the Baptist line. And we have been blessed to be a blessing to others. We've got to realize that we've got to act on it. Well, I want to stop talking now so Lambert can sing, which is what you all need to hear. This is a spiritual that he had to really dig to find one that he could sing. Ain't got time to die. Anybody know that song? Keep so busy praising my Jesus, keep so busy praising my Jesus, keep so busy praising my Jesus, ain't got time to die. Because when I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus, ain't got time to die, because it takes all my time to praise my Jesus, all my time to praise my Lord. If I don't praise him, the rocks are going to cry out. Glory and honor, glory and honor, ain't got time to die. So Lambert's going to sing it better than I can even speak it right now. So Lambert, take it away, child of God. I didn't know it either. <laughs> he learned this just to sing today.
That's Peter after Pentecost. So don't put your red away after that Sunday and think it was one day. That's the beginning of a new life in Christ. And if we let the Holy Spirit in here, the Holy Spirit's going to fill us up and use us and send us into the world in powerful, powerful ways. Amen? Amen, amen. Who's got a joy to share today? Anybody have a joy to share? We need some joy. Jackie. I have a couple of joys. I just want to say that this church is very blessed to have the thrifty petty. That's, a, that, that's kind of a new thing to me. I've been in many, many churches, but to actually have a thrift store within your church, it does so many things. Um, it, it, it's all for missions, um, but there is such a, um, just a, a blessing to have that. So that was one joy. I also have a joy, Kathy, was very, made me have a very big joy this week. We were working on a project, a personal project, and she is a joy to work with. Also, the knitters, um, our XYZ knitters, have reestablished themselves, and I love sitting with them once a month and just knitting and talking about our lives. Do you know, do you know that the XYZ knitters have knitted 74 thousand 74,000 We know that. Hats. We do. We celebrate that all the time. I think uh, that's the first I and, and, and I would just such a it's such a joy to be to be able to sit with them and to hear where they started. I love hearing stories as you can tell. Also, I give thanks for those that do this PowerPoint. <laughs> I am filling in today, and it's not easy because <laughs> you have to press at the right time. My fingers sometimes don't do that. So I give thanks for people that do the PowerPoint. Amen. <laughs> it's, there's no job that's too small. There's no job that is unimportant in this congregation. We've got people who do all sorts of crazy things here that never get mentioned. And... God bless all of you, because when you do that, you are serving Jesus Christ, and you ain't got time to die, because you're too busy. Um, it was a joy this week. It's a joy to have Frida back, and Lisa. They can't talk, because Frida's had strep throat, and Lisa's had tonsillitis.